Hi everyone, Church of SDFU. Today I want to talk about something which is kind of to do with evolution, but it's more philosophy than science. Um, and that's, I watched a documentary a while back and it was about the origins of Homo sapiens. And so what they did basically is they went back to, um, to our earliest kind of ancestor that we had in common with the apes. So the guys were still living in trees, going around, you know, eating fruit and having fun. And then some uh, kind of, I think, I guess it was a climatic change or something occurred. And there wasn't enough food, so they had to get off the trees and start walking. Hit the road, Jack. Um, so, and the whole thing was done in CG. And it, so it just kind of portrayed the life of all of those different ancestors. Um, but what kind of stuck with me was this uh, explanation that because of their uh, their anatomy at that stage when like the first generation of people who had to get off the trees they probably would have suffered considerably walking so they came from where they were climbing mostly and just hanging around um, to a life where they had to migrate and walk great distances and they weren't built for it their legs weren't built for it and to some extent today we still kind of struggle with um, some anatomical problems we have because we weren't meant to stand upright, like our bad backs, for example, and the fact that we can wear our knees out. Um, but so that for them, it was completely new, and they would probably have suffered considerable pain in their everyday life due to the fact that they weren't meant to be walking long distances uh, upright, and they wouldn't have been able to actually kind of stand up properly, so they would have been like crouching trying to get up to survey their surroundings and then going back down and, and suffering because of that as well. And lots of muscles being used that were being overused because they hadn't evolved to that stage. And I guess, I mean, I think I see a similarity there, at least loosely, between those ancestors of ours and us today. I mean, to be one of those, those of our ancestors is kind of one of nature's cruel jokes. They would have struggled, because obviously in your lifetime you can't evolve. Uh, they would have struggled their whole life, and their children still would have struggled their whole lives, undergoing these terrible kind of sufferings and tribulations. Generations, thousands and tens of thousands of years down the track, and then hundreds of thousands of years, along come we. And we take it for granted that we can walk upright and not suffer all of these pains. Um, but to them back then, there was nothing that could have given them relief. They were doomed to their fate of not being quite right for their environment. And I think in a way that's, we obviously were right for walking these days, more or less. But I feel that's our situation today when it comes to civilization and the way that Homo sapiens lives. Because obviously we aren't the first social animal, many social animals exist, um, but we are, as far as we know, at least on Earth, the first civilized animal. We're the first animal that rather than just living in kind of kin groups, in groups of one or perhaps a few families, lives in this civilization in which we don't know the vast majority of other um group members, civilization members, in which we're constantly required to place our trust in a structure where we can't use all of those mechanisms which our ancestors used to determine whether someone was trustworthy because we can't look uh, six and a half or whatever we're at billion people in the eye. Um, and also the fact that our brains don't work, they just don't work the right way in so many ways still for the situation we find ourselves in. Still so often, um, baser instincts, which are really seem to be remnants mainly of our past where things were dangerous, were still more immediate and threats could kind of come out of every corner and aggression was often the best immediate solution. All of these drives are still so omnipresent in us. Um, and you know, it's, that's from an evolutionary perspective, but going beyond that, as thinking beings, we 
want to be happy and we don't want to be constrained by those things anymore. We want to be able to be happy even in ways which don't necessarily fit that well into an evolutionary paradigm. But whilst we're aware of this, while we can think about it and while we can understand what we're going for, we can see what we're grasping, we just are still held back so much by I think our genetics and our nature and we are so malleable just like our ancestors that came off the trees were very malleable they were very malleable most animals would have in that situation most species would have died out like most species in history have died out but they despite not being suited for it could do it they just had to really struggle it's like that with us while we're not really suited for this new way that the world works because it's the way it works best we can make do and we can struggle through but we sometimes don't understand what's going on we sometimes don't like it and I think we sometimes don't understand why we feel the way we do or why we or other people act the way they do because we've gone outside the parameters for which we were designed using that term loosely by nature and evolution and I think that's a very very difficult kind of thing because I mean if this is true and I mean I have the feeling there's at least a grain of truth to it and that means that you know until we develop genetic engineering um, and then still it's too late for us uh, who already live and until then humanity is stuck with all of our failings we're stuck with uh, trying to perfect a mind which is in so many ways not ideal for that kind of perfection to exist in the system that it does today and we've created so many philosophies you know I myself um, consider myself uh, a Buddhist a non-metaphysical Buddhist. I don't believe in reincarnation or anything like that, but I think that's one very powerful philosophy for understanding how the mind works and how we can kind of live in this world um, and deal with a lot of those desires which may not be helpful. And maybe you disagree and you think Buddhism is not helpful and you have your own ideas. And we've come up with many different ones and I think it's not one or the other. It's many of them help but they're all about trying to overcome all of these things which often is seen as just like a part of you know that's just everything it has to be a struggle that's just how it is but I think you know we're just in an unlucky position just like if you went to that ancestor and you know the kid says oh my legs hurt then the parent would say well you know that's just how it always is walking always hurts something always hurts when that's not really true like you know millions of years later millions of years yeah that's probably right right uh, here we are you know walking without any pain and so you know if we exist that long I think millions of years from now uh, we would coexist in a much different way without a lot of the suffering that we have today but you know I guess we're where we are and we have to make the best of it and I guess we're further along at least in our social evolution, whatever social evolution means, I guess that's another strange term that may or may not be such a good analogy to biological evolution, but you know, we're probably further along than people before us. But hey, I wish us luck, and you know, I have this feeling that if you watched us from the outside, if aliens were watching and kind of playing, um, you know, doing a bit of uh, doing a bit of research and just observing, you know, they, they would have, have a lot of sympathy and empathy for us um, because of all of the ways in which we're just learning to walk as civilized, uh, empathetic beings. Anyways, I'll see you guys all later. Church Vestia.